ex-cons of Reddit, what's the most terrifying thing you saw inside of prison? I saw someone take a hot pot, fill it up with baby oil, add a pound of sugar, add some magic shave, bring it to a boil, and then splash it in a person's face. It literally melted the guy's face off. This happened around 1999, and I still have the occasional nightmare about it. Story 2. A white kid getting absolutely destroyed for accidentally sitting on the front bench of the TV area on his second day. They waited for Rec, then started walking with him, and every lap they made, more guys would tag along. Then, once in the blind spot, they jumped him. Six to seven guys beating a 120-pound skinny little white kid. They were climbing up the fence and jumping down on his head. He was out within the first few seconds, but they kept on beating him until the COs gassed everyone. They snapped his lower back, and now he's in a wheelchair. All for not knowing any better. The worst I've ever heard was a grown man being assaulted one night. He refused to pay a protection fee and three dudes assaulted him. They stabbed him in the butt with a toothbrush shank. I've seen some pretty crazy stuff, but theirs were the most memorable. Sometimes I have nightmares about the assault. I've never heard anything like that since. I feel like a lot of stories in this thread are gonna make me very sad about the state of the correctional facilities, huh? Story 3. I did a four-month stint in Malaysia. This Nigerian dude used to pilfer from other cells. This Malay gang found him and dipped his hand in boiling oil. Basically deep-fried it while it was still attached to him. That scream? It curdles my blood, even still. Poor guy was reduced to an unconscious pool of blood, sweat, tears, vomit, crap, and pee. He lost more than his hand on that day. Story 4. The violence was nothing compared to the people. The guy who taught me Scrabble beat his wife to death with a frying pan when she discovered his gambling debts. The guy who taught me poker tied up his employer in his house, and when the boss refused to give him the combo to his safe, the guy just burned the house down with his boss inside. I worked out with a guy who was caught with two arms and one leg in his trunk. He was in an Asian gang and had just performed a hit and was bringing the evidence back to his people for proof. And then he was pulled over. His co-defendant was snitching, so he spent literally all of his time working out to unalive the guy the second he got the chance. Before I got shipped to prison, yeah, these were all in county jail, he finally got his shot and essentially ripped the guy's face off in the middle of a hallway in front of guards. It was a huge screw-up on the cop's part, to the point where it was rumored it was the gang that paid to make sure the snitch died. You live with these people. Play cards, gamble, watch sports. If you're locked in your cell for a big game, you listen on your radios together and talk crap through the hatches in your doors. On Wednesdays, your chicken quarter is going to go towards a huge, homemade meal for whoever wanted to chip in. And it's going to be made by the 22-year-old Crip who's been charged with nine separate murders, and is seemingly the nicest person you'll ever meet. It's frickin' wild. Nothing makes sense, and everything is dangerous. You're in this together, but at the same time, everyone has all sorts of rage just ready to blow. I had an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, as well as a separate case of unlawful possession of a firearm, so I had the pleasure of going to max units. Interestingly enough, the threat of constant danger actually helped things stay calm the vast majority of the time. Everyone's a murderer, no one wants to be murdered type of vibes. I got stabbed with a Dixon pencil, but that was from Richard Busby, Mr. Tie My Boss Up and Burn Him Alive. It was over gambling debt he owed me. He's old and weak. I ultimately took twice what he owed me, and we were back at the table playing poker together the same day. Google his name if you'd like, I believe he just had an appeal denied or something. Either you become one of them, or you live underneath them. And once you're one of them, they're surprisingly and frighteningly good-natured and decent. At least enough to spend a few years with. Story 5. I was never in prison, but in jail a bit for drug charges. I was in my 30s, but my bunkie was a really nice 19-year-old kid in there for selling drugs. He seemed a bit over his head, but introduced me to the jits. I didn't know anyone. And we would play cards and stuff. He had a real high bond. And one day they said to get his crap, he got bail. He didn't know who, but I was so happy for him. The next morning, the CO told me he was shot and unalived that night. Being very respectful. Everyone liked the guy. It was confirmed on the evening news. Really screwed me up, and I can guess who got him bailed. Story 6. Saw a dude get his head caved in in his cell. A new inmate had come in and refused to show his papers. Another inmate came and said that he was in court with him, and he was a child toucher. Later that day, the keys, as we called them, told him he needed to roll his crap up, basically ask for protective custody. He refused. Later that night, after we were all in our cells, his cellie took a pencil and stabbed him in the eye. Then he pulled him off his bunk and smashed his head against the wall till there was nothing 
left. Once he was done, he called the CEO over the intercom and let him handle everything. I could see this through our window as they were in the cell across from us. I've always kind of wondered about this. The whole thing where that kind of offender gets treated really badly in prison. Cause I've heard the whole argument of like, ah, uh, even people in prison have kids. Sure. But part of me, the like, the psychology of it, I feel like it's also like, these people who have done something wrong want to feel like they are still better than someone else who has also done something wrong. They just deem that person's crime worse. And don't get me wrong, it's like, really bad, it's, it's bottom of the barrel, so they're not necessarily wrong. But I do wonder how much of it is ethics versus a feeling of superiority. Story 7. Inmates being denied medical treatment until they're dead. I saw it twice. Both were diabetics, and both elderly. Neither had family support, and both had conditions exacerbated by the inhumane housing situation. In South Texas heat, they lock up 56 men per dorm in poorly ventilated metal buildings. On lockdown, they require you to stay in your bunk on a plastic mattress for weeks, only allowed a 5 minute shower every third day. I was 40 and in decent shape and I thought I might die in there. In the afternoons, the wall next to me was so hot I couldn't leave my hand on it. Shame on TDCJ and all of the employees. They put people in a terrible situation and we allow it to continue. If they treated dogs like that, there would be pitchforks. Story 8. Had a guy stick a full number 2 pencil in his leg, the long way. Inserted it into his thigh and shoved it under the skin until you couldn't see it anymore. Took him to the hospital to have it removed. Days later, he did the same thing in the same hole with a rubberized pencil. Rinse and repeat, hospital removes it again. Couple days later, while actively being watched, he managed to jam part of a styrofoam cup, playing cards and caulking from a cell window into his leg pocket. Took him to the OR. Doctors pulled out another inch of wood pencil, pencil lead, and fragments of god knows what out of there. I don't even think he knew what was in there. Story 9. Honestly, most of it is the same stuff you run into in real life. Gangbangers, thieves, drug dealers, guys with anger management issues, etc. But the real problem is when you affiliate. So I was in Lyme in Colorado. Closed custody, so one level below max. Mostly chill people, but a lot of activity. The worst was they brought in a bus from Buena Vista. There was one kid, 23, nice kid. Just got into Rex because he was short-tempered, so they bumped him up to closed. He had eight months left. He'd been in the pod for three days when an older guy sees him and says he snitched on him when they were in Adams County. So this guy grabs four others and they jump the kid in his cell. They beat the ever-loving crap out of him. And at the end, they dragged him out of his cell propped his neck on the railing, and one big dude just smashed his neck with a kick and snapped it. Flight for life comes, but it's not going to help. All the guys catch a murder charge. The screwed up part is, the older guy yelled, Screw you, name, when his neck snapped. Kid's name wasn't that. The guy had mistaken the kid for someone else. Eight months left. Kid was arrested at 17, 23, when he died. Never even saw the outside of a facility as an adult, and was unalived in a case of mistaken identity. Prison could pop off like that. Story 10. When I was 20 years old, I thought I wanted to be a correctional officer. One night, I was sent to work at the medical ward, where each inmate had their own isolated cell where they were let out twice a day. That night, I was going around with the nurse giving the inmates their medicine, and we came to one inmate's cell, and as soon as we opened the door, I was knocked back by the most putrid smell I have ever smelled in my life. I've been to the dump plenty of times in my life, and it was nothing in comparison to the smell this inmate had going on. Once we were done giving out the medicine, I went up to the officer training me and asked him what was going on with that inmate, and why he smelled so god-awful. He said, Oh, you met Grady? Yeah, he craps and pees himself on purpose. He never changes or showers, so he constantly lives in his own filth. I found out that he was assaulted once in prison, so he started doing that so he wouldn't be assaulted anymore. And the purpose of prison is, is what, again? Because people love to call them correctional facilities. I see no correction happening here. Just trauma. Story 11. Not me, but I spoke to a former inmate after his release who developed severe PTSD from some of the things he witnessed while incarcerated. One of the stories was that he was playing cards with some guys and one of them was smoking a cigarette. Another inmate who was not playing with them approached the table and asked the guy smoking if he could get some shorts on the cigarette. Shorts means before you finished smoking, you gave it to someone else, so they got the last few puffs. The smoker agreed. The inmate wandered off and they went back to playing cards. Well, the guy playing cards must have forgot and finished the cigarette. A little while later, the other inmate came back to the table asking for the short, and the guy at the table told him that he had forgotten about it and finished it. Guy wanders off again and they go back to playing cards. Shortly after, the inmate who wanted shorts comes back to the table, comes up behind the player, pulls his head back and started shanking him in the eye and throat with a pen slash pencil. Dude died over forgetting to give someone a damn cigarette butt. Story 12. 1. Was playing chess and heard, THWACK! 
turned around and a black dude looked about 60, had a seizure while he was standing up and fell onto the metal seat at our table. Blood was absolutely gushing out of this dude's head. I have a friend with epilepsy so knew to put him in recovery position and keep away from his mouth. The COs showed up and shackled slash cuffed him while he was still seizing. As he convulsed, the cuffs cut into his wrists and ankles deeply. I started yelling at them, what the hell are you all doing? Get a gurney and call 911. They told us to lock down on our bunks and shut the hell up or we're going to seg. No one shut up, can't take us all. They instead ushered the entire pod into our outdoor rec area. 30 by 15 enclosed room with a 4 inch slit 10 feet up for fresh air and kept us all out there. Watched this dude seize for another 15 minutes. Blood in a pool all around him from his head, wrists, and ankles being mangled. They eventually took him out and I never saw him again. Almost certain he died. We stayed locked in the yard for four hours and were threatened to not discuss it. 2. In another unit in the same month, a guard suplexed the dude who had to weigh 110 pounds soaking wet for talking back to him. The guy broke his neck and died. You can find the story of this online by searching WCDC body slam death. The guard was charged with manslaughter. Not sure if he was convicted. 3. Was playing Scrabble waiting on the phone to open up. A dude was on the phone with his wife and kids and started losing his crap all of a sudden. He started yelling in the most guttural, heartbreaking way and the guards were like, hey calm down now. While he was on the phone, someone did a drive-by on his house and shot his wife and unalived one of his children. The guards snatched the phone from him and threw him on the ground, restrained him and took him to Seg where there are no phones. Guy was weeping, saying he just heard his baby get murdered on the phone. They just took him to Seg. Never saw him again either. Story 13. Not terrifying exactly, but once a water main near the prison broke in the late afternoon, and the white shirt on duty, the senior administrative correctional officer, just kind of decided to believe that the problem would get fixed quickly enough that no emergency steps were needed. This was summertime in Florida, by the way. Within maybe five hours, the toilets were overflowing with crap, and people were literally crapping on newspapers on the ground like dogs. It was hot, flies were everywhere, and the only water we received before 10am the following morning was a single 4 ounce half cup. After the incident ended, a handful of inmates initiated the grievance process, which was the first step to build up a lawsuit. Those inmates were individually brought before the head administrative white shirt, a colonel in DOC parlance, and were told in no uncertain terms that if they proceeded with the legal process, they would be beaten to death, and the paperwork would reflect that they had died while attempting to unalive a correctional officer. If this isn't the prime example of who watches the Watchmen, I don't know what is. I really hate hearing about stuff like this. Just power tripping losers getting off on uh, just controlling people lower than them, or that they perceive lower than them at least. Story 14. Not an ex-con, but prison admin staff. Right before I started working there, a man was on a classification override at my facility, meaning he was too dangerous to be at the prison, but he still got to be there for some reason. He was psychotic and talking nonsense to his two cellmates when all of a sudden, he screamed he was the devil, and gouged out a man's eyes while the other cellmate was frantically hitting the emergency button. Responding staff had mandated in-house therapy as a result. Horrific. Another was when I was working. A young man in for gang-related stuff brutally beat to death an old man who was just admitted for child crimes. Turns out the man assaulted this kid's younger sister. They didn't have the same last name and she wasn't listed to classification staff so no one knew. Responding staff said his head was kicked in so hard it was unrecognizable and had a consistency of jello. So my previous comment about kid touchers uh, being treated poorly in prison does not apply here. This one absolutely deserved what was coming to him. That inmate had a very personal connection, it wasn't a power trip or anything, this was just revenge, and I'm not that mad about it to be honest. Story 15. I work in jails across the country. There are many unsettling moments. Violence between inmates, people unaliving themselves, psychosis. I remember trying to teach a nurse one day and an inmate kept screaming at me, put your eyeballs back in your head, they're rolling around on the floor. But the moment that sticks out the most by far for me is this. One day I was helping a doctor. When she's helping her patients, I try to stay out of the room, so that way I'm not interfering with her work. For some reason, the specific patient that she was working with stuck out in my mind before. Though I see hundreds a day during MedPass where I follow a nurse from cell to cell, I specifically remember seeing this man. He was relatively young and very polite, which I guess is what stuck out at me. He always said, Hello ma'am, how are you? Thank you, please etc. I remember looking at the chart to see what his name was. I rarely remember names, I actually feel it's better not to. Anyway, I'm standing in the hallway outside of the doctor's office when another patient who is sitting on the bench waiting to be seen says to me, stay away from that name. He's a crazy dude. 
I laughed because it's one inmate telling me to stay away from another inmate. I don't let anybody stand behind me or within five feet of me. My laughing changed his tone. He got a lot more serious. His voice raised in intensity. No, I'm serious. Stay away from him. He is crazy. Okay, point taken. I nod my head and in that moment, I'm thankful for the COVID masks that hide my reaction. Not a moment later, the corrections officer comes waltzing down the hallway, swinging his keys in hand and whistling. Oh, hey, that's body bag lag. Name slightly changed for privacy. My eyes immediately widened. I googled him later. That man had a girlfriend. She got pregnant. She didn't let him see the baby when it was born. He wanted custody. He and his family, mom, dad, brother, planned and successfully executed all ten of her family members. Anyone who could possibly get the baby before he would receive custody. And maybe I'm misremembering, but I think it worked. I believe he had custody of the kid for a while until he himself came forward and confessed as well as threw his whole family under the bus and accepted his punishment. I think he became super religious or maybe the guilt got to him. I remember his cell always had a hundred crosses taped to the wall. I've had scarier moments in jail. Whole cells having to go on lockdown because they see a girl working. A lot of people touch themselves looking at you, but body bag lag will always stick out to me. Story 16. I was inside a female prison, so my perspective is a little different. For one, all prisons are different, from county level to state and federal. I was in state for most of my time. A couple things were pretty terrifying. For one, the amount of banging between guards and inmates was ridiculous. It was consensual in that they both said yes. But it can never really be consensual when it's a guard and an inmate. The power difference is just too much. You couldn't really say no either. It's not that the guards would retaliate, it's just that they wouldn't protect you when another inmate or group of inmates attacked you. The really creepy thing in mine was the kid toucher lady. She was a lifer. No one actually messed with her because it seems like the guards were on her side, for reasons we'd suspected. She was also really friendly to new inmates, particularly younger looking petite inmates, for reasons you can imagine. They were owned by her if they let them, like a small gang in jail. They all had the same prison tattoo, which I didn't realize till I was in the shower with a couple of them. I don't really have much to say to close this one out. There were a lot of really heavy and tough and disturbing stories in here, and so I tried to stay out of it for the most part. I hope you enjoyed watching the video, maybe learned something, or maybe this is your scared straight moment so you never go to jail. Whatever you got out of this video, I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.